I am Vouch, and I'm drunk. This is a video. Vosh and the haunting specter of baby leftism. Yeah. We saw the first minute of this before, where it was me and Professor Flowers, and I basically just spit facts for a minute. So anyway, we can just skip past. It's cool. Just assume that I'm right all the time, and you basically got the first minute down. Never anthropologically determined control the territory. Lua has already done her own response. I'm not going to pretend that I know everything or speak for her, but I had some time on my hands, and this debate really annoyed me. Yeah. So I just wanted to try yeah. and talk about yeah. a few things. Yeah. What can yeah. I say? I'm yeah. an unpredictable yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. reaction that Ian and his fans exhibited when faced with the general assertion that it's not your right to dictate the terms of decolonization to the colonized is actually not too unfamiliar to me. No, I didn't actually say that. I just said you can't do an ethnic cleansing. That's it. I didn't dictate the terms of decolonization. I just said don't do an ethnic cleansing. That's it. That's the that's literally the only precondition that I assigned in that whole conversation. It was it was just that. I mean, I guess that's policing the terms of decolon. But if I said like don't rape your colonizers and then burn them in a mass grave. I mean, you would agree with that, right? Well, maybe you wouldn't. I guess that's technically policing decolonization, but I think it's a justified policing. I think it's okay to say not do that. I don't know. Because it reminds me of, well, me. When I was a young leftist, I felt particularly uncomfortable by this man. But I because like if you know... Malcolm X didn't take his fools gladly. He didn't give a shit and he took no prisoners because like fundamentally he wanted autonomy for his own people I like and he him. didn't want that to be dictated by whites. I like his him. manner and content of speaking always made me as a white dude feel a bit, yeah, you know, I don't know. He, he says such hostile stuff. You know, I like he doesn't care about white people. You know, we, this doesn't work. We've got to work together. But Yet as time went on, I started connecting some of the stuff that he said to the stuff that I see in real life. Wait, but he did believe in working together. Wait, hold on. Malcolm, wait, hold on. Malcolm X didn't believe that there was no way for white and black people to work together later in life he 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 did he he moved away for a time he had that like ethno-nationalist shit going on but after he moved away from it and he he did believe that like community and working together was the best way to fight racism he was still a radical i'm not taking that away from him but is the is 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 being like in favor of racial segregation like radical like is that the radical position we want to endorse and I started to understand a little bit better the mindset of minorities. I started listening to more of his work and other people's like Franz Fanon and James Baldwin. And eventually my opinion on Malcolm X turned from a cowering E to one of, hmm, is what it is, right on. Because I understood, I guess, my place in the world. I understood, yeah, I've got it pretty well off, to be honest. And I got that when it comes to your sense of self, all of the pedantic consistencies never really matter much in the long term. What you want first and foremost is to exist as a human being. I think people got this same anxious, almost offended feeling when No Name said that she didn't want Whitey following her on Twitter anymore. Ah, no, no. What was that again? When No Name said that she didn't want Whitey following her on Twitter anymore. That's pretty, that's pretty weird. I'm sorry. You're gonna, you'll get no brownie points from me for the incredibly brave act of being like discriminatory against white people. I just like, wow, dude, you're so, wow, you're so brave. You are truly improving race relations in the United States by being weird about white people. You are you are de you are extremely and definitely making things better. You're so good. It's you're so amazingly smart. Amazing. Ah, no, no name. You got to work together. No name. Uh, well, 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 woke segregation. Ah, Fred Hampton. Yes, because acclaimed black communist rapper No Name has totally never heard of Fred Hampton. Wait. They're not saying she's never heard of them. They're just citing... Wait, why are you race baiting? She, they're just saying that this guy had different views. They're not saying she's never heard of him. Why are you being so weird about it, dude? Holy shit. Take a hint. It is this very oh. milk toast, baby's first political education mindset. That Holy shit, he is. Yeah, no, guys, Bad Mouse Productions is, is gonna be one of those people whose, like, political views are primarily determined around being, like, should I, should I just embrace my drunk perspective on this and just say this being anti-white? Yeah, no, I'll, I'll say it. 
I think that a lot of lefties, especially tankies, are just kind of anti-white because they delusionally believe that that's the same thing as being anti-racist. And I say, fuck them. I just think it's bad. It's, it's just stupid. You're not anti-racist. Be like reversing bigotry, like doesn't actually fix anything. This weird, like standoffish segregationist. Yeah, we'll work on it in our own, own way. Shit just doesn't work. It has never worked in this country. It does not work. You don't improve the lives of anyone. You just feel like a LARPy Twitter warrior, you know? Oh uh, yeah, dude. No name is totally improving the conditions for non-white people by saying like, uh, I feel weird when white people follow me on Twitter. It's like, this doesn't do anything. It's funny because tankies are supposed to be the ones who complain about like symbolic liberal progressivism, but this is the epitome of that. The absolute epitome of that. You can't get more symbolic than a performative denunciation of the majority power holders with no meaningful action built behind it in a direction that has historically led to nothing but like destruction for, for the minority group. It's, it's very performative, you know, very liberal, very liberal. Bad mouse. It appears to be very common these days, especially amongst white American lefties. White. But is also across the white. pond as well, who seem to think that it can all just be solved by what I can only describe as vague gesturing. Eh? Let's all work together. And that's not how it works. Well, you that's not vague gesturing. The idea that people of all racial groups should work together to overthrow white supremacy isn't vague gesturing. It's like the only thing that seems to work. So. Yeah. Mm. I'll just claim, yeah, integration, and then by some magic formula, we all just get along. I don't I remember think a certain black communist state his absolute disdain for when white that? pinkos come into black spaces during and after actions and hand out flyers for their org under the banner of, yeah, let's unite, but then are never ever seen again. Do you uh, understand that that- What, what, what is that? Is he implying that BLM would have gone better if no white people had marched? Wait, what, what point are we making? That argument isn't against white people not participating, it's against white people trying harder. You're making the opposite argument, dog. You're making the- right now, the, the point you're trying to, to put forward is supports mine. The idea that there should be a greater degree of interracial union in fighting racism. And you're making the argument that like, well, it's bad because they're not trying harder. Well, yeah, we should try harder, right? Yeah. Yeah! Doesn't really seem to fit, right? There's something very performative about it. It's very much unite, but on our terms. Well, Hence why many no. socialist people of color prefer the company of other people like them, even if their views don't exactly line up than with white socialists. Weird. Weird shit. You know, people of this racial group prefer their own K. Okay, all right, no, fine, sure. No, 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 go for it, yeah. Fine, no, that's fine. I mean, I too like to justify, do you think like white people are actually like the most progressive demographic in the country, uh, in, in, in urban areas, I'm pretty sure. Should like, it's like, oh yeah, white people just like to hang out with white people because they're shared values of trans rights. Like that's kind of a weird thing to defend prescriptively, right? It's like, maybe we should all get along and like, you know, work on these problems, man. And it only really takes a quick look at Ian's rep. Is this dude white? Are you even asking that question? LARP, LARP and me. Are you even, I guess I don't actually know. You know, I, I don't want to be shown up in case they're not white. i just, I just want to say that I get high levels of Yakubian energy from this video right now, you know? This video does feel like it was crafted from the demonic spawn of an evil scientist. Uh, who who created white people to fuck with black people because he's mean or whatever? I'm get I'm getting I'm 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 getting those vibes a little bit, you know. But to, uh, to see why that might be, I so could I'm smell the lack of harder. melanin. I don't give a fuck if you don't like being around white people. Face. He's got this incredibly juvenile gamer bro populist understanding of race, amongst many other things. Wait, let me see. Throughout history, there's been one thing the capitalist class has feared: workers of different races organizing separately without solidarity. Read history lib, that's why strike, strike bakers and business owners have historically encouraged labor unions racially. Wait, is this guy anti-communist? Wait, the fact that strike breakers and bosses have historically tried to sow racial dissent to avoid, like, racially integrated unions is an objective fact. Wait, are you- Wait, this- This is a very clear- This is an anti id poll materialist reading of- Oh, man. Damn, I didn't know that he had abandoned communism. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy.
That's crazy. I didn't know he was a liberal. Liberal. I know that this video is not going to convince anyone because I'm fucking drunk off my mind, but I know that Bad Mouse is going to watch it at some point. And I, I, I don't know. Maybe we can convert him back into being a communist a little bit, you know? That appears to give off a progressive tone, but in reality it just feels mute and hollow. Ah. Not to mention egoistic. It's ah. not a reactionary perspective to want to not talk to white leftists. Ah. It's you being arrogant and starting with the position that I am right, True. everybody come to me. True. Oh, they're not coming to me? Well then in that- how many, Wait, how many subs does this channel have? Oh. Well, I don't know, bad mouse! I guess a few of them came to me, huh? What, what, do you, what do you mean? What do you mean come to me? I don't give a fuck if people don't come to me. If they disagree with me, I'll shit talk them. I don't care. They can come debate me. They cannot debate me. I don't care. I'll shit talk them. Let's just, if yeah, if people disagree with me, then yeah, I think they're wrong. That's how disagreement works. I always feel like people try to do this epic own with me. They're like, Vosh, you think everyone who disagrees with you is wrong? Like, yeah, if they disagree with me. I will think they're wrong. That is, yes, that's how the concept of thinking things works. That That, that is true, yes. That, that is how things work. Like, I've heard this own like a hundred times. Wh what do you mean? Yes. If people disagree, of course. In that case, they must be reactionary. But of course, it's true. not just Ian, it's systemic. And I think part of this comes down to the way we're often I taught am about the topics system. like nationalism in school and the media by just simply showing the white boogeyman and not understanding it as a very serious thing that has a lot of complexities and duality to it. If you watch Flower's video, she explains- I think they mean you're LARPing as a philosopher king. LARPing? ...means there that there were once various people groups across the contiguous United States who are now just known under the simple moniker of Native American How or they American animate Indian. This? This looks That's sick. because of history. History, power dynamics, and minoritization. Uh -huh. These forces created a shared struggle amongst those people. A shared experience, if you will, that coalesced okay. these groups as a nation. Uh -huh. Importantly, they still exist. They w wait. I know there are indigenous people who would disagree with this. It's true that there's a shared experience of being victimized by colonialism, but the idea that they've been unified into a kind of nation by that victimization is not true. True. It might be true in some groups, but I don't think that's I don't I don't think it's been the unifying experience that this video seems to suggest that it has. Still exist there, and most importantly, there's somebody else there who isn't part of that group for a plethora of reasons. Ask yourself the reason why we call people That's also a simplification because guys, Native Americans are Americans. It's not just two separate groups. It's in-group divisions within, like, broader paradigms. If you're a Native, like, you're an American, like, you're in this country, there are things, if, if you're born this country and you're, like, descended from Natives, there are dual allegiances, dual things pulling you. It's not as simple as, like, it's just a country of Native people that are, that are being sieged by, uh, by non-Native people, you know? People who live in Britain, British rather than, say, Britonic. It's because the Britonic what? tribes physically don't exist as a concept anymore. They've been absorbed into the dustbin of history through conquests, miseducation- Wait! Does he think the differences between the native tribes are as historically irrelevant as the differences between different British ethnicities? Wait! Dude, is he a- Wait! This is actually racist! Are you actually saying all the tribal distinctions have faded away? Nobody in England gives a fuck about whatever tribe bullshit you just pulled up because that shit was a billion years ago. Nobody fucking cares about that. Native Americans in America absolutely care about the tribal distinctions. Dude, why is it that every person who calls me anti-indigenous is worse on indigenous issues than I am? Every time, dude. No, he's arguing the opposite and that you believe that? Wait, he's arguing the opposite? He's, he's, he's saying, I believe this? Isn't he clearly saying right now that oppression has unified different ethnic and tribal groups into a shared identity? I'm pretty positive he is, um, he's misunderstanding. Okay, wait, hold on. Th did, I, did I misread this? Hold on. If you will, that coalesce these groups as a nation. Importantly, they still exist. They still exist there. And most importantly, there's somebody else there who isn't part of that group for a plethora of reasons. Ask yourself the reason why we call people who live in Britain British, 
rather than, say, Britonic. It's because the Britonic tribes physically don't exist as a concept anymore. They've been absorbed into the dustbin of history through conquests, miscegenation, and the lack of a dominant power to contrast with. It doesn't justify any such horrific acts of history, but it's simply a fact. They are now gone as a people, and they can't really be reconciled. You attempt to try and revive an ancient culture as your identity. You can try. Even if you trace your ancestry back over 2,000 years, it doesn't work. Because there isn't an equivalent dynamic involved. So you end up looking like a weirdo, and not the oppressed. Self-appointed druids are not under attack in this country. I don't, that, I don't think they're claiming they are, but... That's what it's all about. Who's being affected now? No, wait! I, wait, hold on. I was literally right! He was making the argument that all the native tribes have been unified under a single ethnic identity. Wait, wait, I literally had it right. Why were people in chat arguing that that was him ascribing a position to me? I was correct. Not some stupid red ice media level discussion on who owned it last. So when these groups form as a nation, their inherent experience, in contrast to the other, takes on a fundamentally different character. Let me ask you another question. Name me a white nationalism or an English nationalism, or a French, Aussie, German, American nationalism that fundamentally cements its beliefs as left-leaning. You can't. That's- Doesn't, uh, isn't Scottish nationalism and Kur- Well, this guy's a tanky, so he probably wouldn't believe this, but Kurdish nationalism is considered, I think, pretty left-leaning. Scottish nationalism, um, I think, uh, they, they, they tend to be more left-leaning than, like, the, the rest of the UK. Yeah. But it's not, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, right? I mean, those are two. I'm sure I could find more if I, you know, if I, if I poked around a little bit more, yeah. It's because the inherent nature of majority powerful nations leans itself towards vulgar characteristics. Like spoiled toddlers getting their toys taken away, they- Vulgar character- These are some very- Isn't this, like, really weird terminology? Vulgar characteristics. Earlier he said miscegenation. Like, it's, it's like- it's kind of odd, isn't it? A little bit? It's a little weird, champ. I'm just weird. Just, yeah, a little, bit, a little bit strange. I just feel like you can argue, like, the basic points that he's trying to make right now without, without some of the weird shit. They lash out at the slightest glimpse of fairness. You go to a country like Ireland, however, a former colony, and notice how the nature of Irish nationalism, or republicanism, historically carried with it a very different standing to that of its neighbour. Go even further down the rung, there are even more pressing issues that need solving, and thus the nature of these groups fold themselves towards solving- Okay, so they're saying- okay, so they're saying that, um, oppressed groups can use nationalism in ways that are beneficial to them? Okay, I mean, I'm, I'm in favor of black nationalism, so I don't- Those present injustices. Whether a group actually calls itself a nationalism or not, it doesn't take away the very material reality that emerges when one is of a shared culture, history, or language. If you're a white American, you can watch all manner of American media and get that funny feeling inside. That same feeling cannot always be said for others. What? It comes as a great shock to discover that when Gary Cooper was killing off the Indians, and you were rooting for Gary Cooper, that the Indians were you. What? You live in a country in which the dominant hegemony represents and glorifies people like you. And whether you disagree with that hegemony or not, just saying that doesn't matter, you're still influenced by it. That's why the calls of people to say, oh, it's nothing doesn't really matter because you still have a home to go back to. You still what? have a nation by which you can rest on. In summary, status quo nationalism almost always bends to- I'm sorry, I've, I'm so sorry. I've, I have no idea what the fuck we're going on about right now. Is this a response to me? Are we, are we implying that I'm like pro-nationalism? I, I, I'm sorry, I, do, I don't know. This is very well put together, though. I gotta wonder, like, how this was constructed. To the right. But in oppressed ones, you get a mix. I will say, though, that even a vulgar trend from an oppressed nationalism vulgar? is not and never the same as its polar opposite. Take a very known example. The Nation of Islam is, of course, well known for its highly homophobic, sexist, and frankly weird views. Uh -huh. I bet even Ian might label them as racist towards whites. <laughs> I think that... I think they're racist towards white and black people. I think, I think racial essentialism makes you kind of like ubiquitously. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, I am a progressive. That is true. That, that, is, that is true. Yeah. It's scoff. He did though. Yeah. Yeah. Cause he thinks, yeah, this is one of those, like you can't be racist against white people things. Why is he calling you Ian? It's an attempt at unnerving me. Literally everyone online calls me Vosh like ubiquitously. My name isn't a secret or anything like that. It's some weird attempt at trying to reach past my identity to like attack. It's like when people say Carl instead of Sargon, but it feels odder in my case because there's not really a, a habit of doing that. So I don't really know, but I don't mind. I mean, it's my name. 
It's like uh, it's like when my, what my mom calls me. You know, my mom doesn't call me Vosh. <laughs> but in their position <laughs> as an oppressed group, they are still in the mission of helping black self-determination. Be that in prisons, drug rehab, and housing and employment projects. Those are all things that speak to the people they're talking to, and just as a matter of fact, they often do it a lot better than many communist groups in the United States. So, yeah. What is, what is the... Hold on. How effective has the nation of Islam been in advocating for... Uh, hold on. Oh, words. All right, hold on. Um, practices. Yeah, let's see. Okay. Uh, let's see. Is this guy actually defending the nation of Islam? Oh my god, what? Didn't- wait, hold on. Who killed Malcolm X again? Just out of curiosity? Now, I could- I could be a huge fed on this, but what I was, uh... What I was informed was that Malcolm X was actually killed by Nation of Islam members because they were mad. They felt that he had betrayed them by- by becoming more moderate, right? That's- that- I- that's what I remember, if I was- if I was wrong. It just, it would just be- it would be a little ironic if he opened this video by citing Malcolm X and is now defending the group that possibly killed him. There's like a lot of conspiracy shit around Malcolm X's death, right? I think there's like a lot of, a lot of blurry stuff around that. Since its founding in 1930, the Nation of Islam has grown to one of the wealthiest and best-known organizations in Black America. Its theology of innate Black superiority over whites and the deeply racist, anti-Semitic, and anti-LGBT rhetoric of its leaders have earned the NOI a prominent position in the ranks of organized hate. Nice. It was the CIA that killed Malcolm X who got a confession. Deathbed letter from former cop claims New York Police Department FBI helped kill Malcolm X. Let me see. Letter shared by a deceased former New York City police officer alleged that the officer the FBI, played a role in the murder of Malcolm X. Wrote newly released letter, uh, two men charged security details, released before the speech. So they're saying that he, they made sure he wasn't adequately protected. According to the letter, it's instructed to devise a plan to bomb a statue of liberty on two key members of some security detail. So this guy claims that the two members of Malcolm X's security detail were arrested so that the line would be open for the Nation of Islam to assassinate him. Is that correct? That seems like it might be a 50-50 thing, kind of, a little bit. Seems like the, in that case, it would be the FBI facilitating the Nation of Islam assassination of Malcolm X. Well, that's good! I hate the FBI! And I hate the Nation of Islam. Dude, that slaps. Now I can hate all of them. That's awesome. Doesn't really take away from my point that the Nation of Islam people were, uh, were, were the ones that killed him. But anyway, um, let me see. Uh, 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 practices. Okay. Services and prayer. Lifestyle. The Nation required new members change any name inherited from slave owners. Okay. Economic and educational independence. Let's see. Some of its African-American left-wing anti-capitalist critics have derisively dismissed the nation's approach to economics as black capitalism. Farrakhan, who's a, hate, who's a hate leader, by the way, has responded that while socialism appeals to him, capitalism is the only feasible road to economic empowerment for African-Americans. So, as I understand it, the Nation of Islam is literally just an ethno-supremacist group that just prioritizes black people, not because they care about racial equality, but they prioritize black people in the same way that, like, the, the prison neo-Nazis prioritize white people. This pro probably, isn't, uh, probably isn't the best way. Why the fuck is Bad Mouse defending the Nation of Islam? Why are they defending an objectively racist, capitalist, anti-Semitic, anti-LGBTQ organization? To own me. But tragically, I am not owned. Sadly, I'm only sobering up. Think about that. So that is a very easy way of understanding why there is a difference between black and white nationalism, and how the common reduction- How- wait. Wait, how is there- wait, hold on. Wait, how is there a different- Wait, how is there a difference? Luis Farrakhan is liter acts literally the same way as white nationalists do. He just doesn't have the power to enact all of his goals. He's ideologically identical to them. They're exactly the same. Wait, how is it- wait, how is this a difference? White nationalists also act in the interest of white people, but that doesn't differentiate them. It's just different groups they support. Action of it into a vile mass of in-group and out-group dynamics just doesn't hold up. Because there are very genuine claims made by one group that simply doesn't compare to the other. Wait, not if you put Luis Farrakhan on the other side here? Wait, that's not like young Luis Farrakhan. I've only seen old Luis Farrakhan. That's not young Luis Farrakhan, right? I've only seen him like old, 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 old. That's commentary. Okay, okay, just make, just fucking making sure. Because I'm still drunk, and if you motherfuckers got on my case... Yeah, okay, he looks... Yeah, Luis. There we go. 
If anything, the, look, Luis Farrakhan looks to me like he should be on like a 1990s sitcom, doesn't he? Like a little bit? Doesn't he look like he'd have the one-liner a little bit? You know what I mean? Like somebody else would like, like spill a can of beans or like slip on a banana peel. And he'd go like, he'd go like, oh, brother. And then he'd look at the camera and then like the, yeah, it's the bow tie and his like wearied expression or something like that, I feel. He, yeah, he's got like a grandpa Lee, like a kind of a grandpa look, which sucks because he's like ideologically, he's a monster. So, you know, it's, it's uh, a little unfortunate that, but yeah. Anyway, I think that Luis Farrakhan and Richard Spencer would, 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 would get along great. Historically, uh, black separatists have gotten along with white nationalists. Malcolm X's widow explicitly accused him of having a role in Malcolm X's death. In a 1994 interview, Gabe Pressman asked Shabazz whether Farrakhan had anything to do with Malcolm X's death. She replied, of course, yes. Nobody kept it a secret. It was a badge of honor. Everyone talked about it, yes. So actually, Luis Farrakhan had a role in murdering Malcolm X, one of the most influential black uh, civil rights activists in history. And Richard Spencer, to my knowledge, has never succeeded in killing uh, a, a member of the like black civil rights activist groups. So if anything, in terms of harming black civil rights, I would say, I, unironically, Luis Farrakhan has been way more destructive to racial equality than Richard Spencer. Richard Spencer was an e-boy who got like two minutes of fame before getting decked and having a like steep decline down into irrelevance. Luis Farrakhan has had decades of, of corruptive influence on racial politics in this country, up to and including facilitating the assassination of real political leaders. If anyone disagrees with that, by the way, you're free to look up the history of both these guys, okay? Because it is, it is, that is absolutely the case. 100%, yeah. All right. Watch Farrakhan play violin. Is he good? It wouldn't make me like him anymore. Not all relative, like some seem to think it is. Such claims are decidedly liberal. Wait, hold on. No, they're not. Gay people in Saudi Arabia are just a product of Western degeneracy that feeds in through global media. Um, in reality, it's actually a, a product of white international um, uh, uh, cultural bias that is infesting the people in Saudi Arabia. So given that, given they're basically a symptom of Western degeneracy, do you think they not have a right to address that in whatever way they think is most culturally effective? The great thing about reality is that you can wheedle out the difference. Wait, why didn't you include her response? I feel like that might be a little important between truths and untruths. Look at the what, historical what you're record saying, and determine who's colonized what or you're not. Saying, like people are gonna say stuff and then there's history. There's things that actually happen. It isn't to say that all of this exists in infinity. When Wait, what's the response to my question? Wait, the point of me saying that in that discussion was that she was essentially arguing that like you would you have a right to do anything that you want to fight against colonization. But Saudi Arabians legitimately argue that homosexuality is a product of Western cultural colonization. Plenty of homophobic countries say that. So what, do they have a right to like throw gay people off roofs? You've already said you have the right to engage in ethnic cleansing against white people. There are photos of Nation of Islam meetings where the Nazi party of America was invited to come. Really? Do we have pictures of that? Oh my God. George Lincoln Rockwell and members of the American Nazi party attend a Nation of Islam summit in 1961. This guys, this is the guy Bad Mouse Productions is defending as the um as as the superior advocate for black uh civil rights as uh as as opposed to uh people who think white and black people should get along. This is legitimately the group they're defending. To be fair, they don't look very happy. Uh, honest to god, like what would they have to disagree with? They're probably thinking like, damn, these are good points. Wish they're being made by a white person. That's probably what they're thinking. Have you listened to Luis Farrakhan speak? Have you, have you actually listened to the shit that guy has to say? <laughs> he's, he, he's not a progressive, guys. Luis Farrakhan was not the leader. Oh, okay, okay. Well, Nation of Islam, like, still had many views, um, I think, that would later, like, sort of culminate um, in, into the, the, the types of stuff that you would see from the leadership in Luis Farrakhan. When did Luis... Hold on. Luis Farrakhan... We have... Um, Still pretty bad at typing right now. Oh, I didn't misspell that. That's amazing. After War Eighth, Dean Muhammad reorganized the original NOI into the Orthodox Sunni Islamic Group American Society of Muslims. Farrakhan began to rebuild the NOI as final call. Wait, when does it say when does it say that he was appointed? Oh, he he joined the Nation of Islam back in 1955, and he was made leader in 1975. Okay. All right, gotcha. 
Wait, hold on, let me think. Wait, Luis Farrakhan can sit there and preach that Jews are literal Satan to his congregation and just get away with it, and this motherfucker is defending it? Yeah, well, yeah, that would be because, again, I'm so sorry to belabor the point. Like all tankies, Bad Mouse has no priorities outside of being anti-Western and anti-white. It's not about being pro-black or pro-developing world. It's just about being anti those groups. It doesn't have any root in like a... Is Bad Mouse a tanky? Yes. It doesn't have any root in like a fundamental ideological like precedent. He's not a communist or a socialist even. He's just charitably a liberal and uncharitably a fascist who agrees with a different set of baseline groups and ideologies he wants to defend. But there's not much beyond that, really. Not only that, but Malcolm X during his time with the nation literally said the Nazi Party of America and the Nation of Islam agreed on everything. And Malcolm X said after they met with the Nazis, the fucking Klan did not mess with the nation because they agreed. Huh. The black nationalist Nation of Islam and the American Nazi Party didn't have a lot of comment, but they did believe in staying as far away from each other's race as possible. Oh, there are some gamer words in this here thing. Um, this is from the National Post. But yeah, no, the, the basic sentiment of this is correct. Historically, black separatists have worked with the KKK, with Nazi parties. Yeah. By 1961, Klan members began to view black nationalism as a pleasing... Al they mean black separatism. Everyone misuses this. As a pleasing alternative to the growing U.S. movement towards nonviolent integration, the Klan offered more than 20,000 acres of Georgia land to the Nation of Islam, intending to kickstart an exodus of black American blacks to segregated homelands. Damn, is that true? The Klan offered 20,000 acres of the Nation of Islam just to get black people to fuck away from them? Holy shit. Malcolm X said he personally reviewed the Klan's land offer and brokered a truce between the two organizations. Keep in mind, by the way, the only reason that Bad Mouse made this video is because I said that I'm opposed to the ethnic cleansing of white people. And all this shit he's defending and justifying is just to fight me against that. Literally. Like, that, that's what he's fighting against. The, the crime of saying you shouldn't do ethnic cleansing against white people. And that's what put these guys in a tizzy. Imagine. Let me pee real quick and then uh, I'll be right back. And I guess I'm sober now. I think doing debate bro shit actually, actually does sober me up. Hold on. Times change, well, so do the dynamics. If it goes past its necessity, then it will become vulgar and dogmatic. But like I said, we live in a world made up of nations. And until that true, physically goes true. away, anything else is, again, just vague gesturing. So it's interesting that he's talking about vague gesturing when he hasn't yet mentioned the ethnic cleansing of white people, which was the specific thing that I was talking against. It's just, he's being very vague about the specific thing that I said I was against, you know? It's almost like he doesn't want to admit that I'm totally in favor of all forms of decolonization um, and, and land back. I just don't want, well, I guess all forms, but ethnic cleansing, right? Um, but he hasn't mentioned that yet. He's being very vague, you know? In a situation such as Israel-Palestine, we can now better understand the dynamics involved in the stakes they play. Palestinians, which, remember, doesn't exclude indigenous Jews and other men and minorities, are, as of current, the indigenous group of today. Not because they lived there for a while, but because of a shared experience through contrast to a dominant group. Just like the Maori are indigenous to New Zealand, even though they only arrived some Pumping 300 years guns. before the Europeans did. Jewish people, of course, still have the right to self-determination. They still exist today as a minoritized group. What that does not suddenly grant them, however, is rule over a land because their people happened to live there some time ago. Really? You think that because their people controlled that land some time ago, that doesn't give them unlimited control over what they... Okay. All right. I agree. There wasn't an apartheid-esque situation until the lines were drawn by the settlers. And arguably, you could also point to many other lands that also hold Jewish claim, most notably Iberia, which flourished prior to the Inquisition. Somehow, I don't think this logic would suddenly pan out for any other group, would it? Drawing lines what? in the sand to a country that you don't live in, to which there is no colonial dynamic involved, is hardly a decolonial project, is it? Come I'm not entirely sure if I understand the... I'm not entirely sure if I understand the point that he's making. If... If you really want to, you can find basically any ethnic group on the planet, and you can find out, like, who colonized them, like, a billion years ago. It's, it's, it's a very stupid way of trying to divvy up borders. The real question is, how do we minimize harm and maximize good that we can get based on where people are right now and what we can do with the fact that people are there right now? Like, that's that's all we can really do, you know? I don't know why it's like, like I, don't, I don't... Yeah, we can only go forward. I don't know, it's like some ethnic group has more of a claim to 
this, that, or the other. I, I, I don't know. Demon Mama reviewed this video. She went way harder on him than you did. Well, I'm chill and I'm drunk. She concluded no British person should ever talk about American history. Well, I don't think the problem is American history. I think the main problem is that um, Bad Mouse just has a fundamentally bad understanding of dialectical materialism and racism. I just, it seems to me like Bad Mouse is driven, like, like first principle here is like try to own Vouch. And the second principle is have even a, even a brief understanding of how any of these systems work, you know? But I guess I wouldn't expect that much from somebody of his ideological predilections. Come on. And if you want to read a little bit more about this on the very unique nature of modern day Zionism, then I would recommend Ilan Pape's book, 10 Myths About Israel. So this is why the cries of F no state that has basically become a red scare amongst many leftists simply doesn't compute. Oh, Literally what? every country that deposed its former colonizers just became another state. Haiti. Wait, this is the Nazi argument. The Nazi argument is that there's no difference between a nation and an ethno state. That by definition, nations are defined by a shared ethnicity. This is, wait, I've only heard this argument a few times and every time it's been from Nazis, that ethno states and states are the same thing. And that like ethnically heterogeneous states are, are like a aberrant product of like different groups that shouldn't be together or something. I, I've heard that for, before though. Jamaica, Kenya, Algeria, Tanzania, DRC, Sudan, Egypt, Zambia, Uganda, Zimbabwe, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, Malaysia, Indonesia, Ireland. As far as I know, there is no ethnic validation necessary to go and live in these places. Believe me, the only country- Yeah, because to my knowledge, they're not ethnostates. I don't know all the details of a lot of- Like, I don't know the details of the African countries, but at least with Ireland and Vietnam, they're, they're not ethnostates. You, you can go and live there regardless of your racial group. What? What? I, does this person understand my position? No, of course they don't. I don't know why I'd ask that. He's saying they aren't ethnostates, but still displace their colonizers. Yeah, but there's a difference between displacing your colonizers and committing an ethnic cleansing. There's a huge difference between those things. Like, again, keep in mind that in the specific hypothetical that I was talking about, I was saying that South Africa should not deport the six million white residents there who have been there for hundreds of years who live there as ordinary citizens albeit generally of a higher economic class there's a huge difference between deporting the literal active militarized occup occupation of your country and deporting an entire race of people and professor flowers was defending deporting the entire race of people not overthrowing colonizers the white people in South Africa aren't currently colonizing South Africa. They're South Africans. They're a privileged group within South Africa, but they're not representatives of, of the Dutch. The white people in South Africa are not like conscripts of the Dutch crown occupying South Africa. They live in South Africa. But Professor Flowers has admitted that her definition of colonizer literally means white people. She said that in her convo with Dr. Heemd. That to her, it literally, like, colonizer means white people. So ignore all the, like, rest of history where colonizers can be of any, like, race or whatever, because it's not a racially deterministic concept. But, so, from her perspective, uh, the white South Africans would be colonizers, uh, which, which to me, I think is absolutely ridiculous. And I think this is the misappropriation of the term colonizer. A colonizer, just in case you guys don't know, refers to a person or a group or a country who is literally actively colonizing a country as in they're not citizens of that country they're not like regular people who live there and vote there and either whatever they're part of an occupation of that country or an ongoing attempt to ethnically or culturally or nationally displace the existing people there but that doesn't refer to just every white person in south africa or every person who lives in america that's not what colonizer means if you want to play that definition, everyone everywhere is a colonizer. Because guess what, buddy? Those Native Americans were fighting each other before we got here too, okay? It's a really dumb definition of colonizer if you're going to boil it down to any group that has occupied a territory that another group had before. Because depending on how far back you set those goalposts, literally all ethnic groups on Earth are colonizers. Some are more successful than others, but they still all are. That's so very dumb. It's very reductive. And honestly... I think it's racist.
because I think it invalidates the real issue with modern colonization by diluting it to the point where you're essentially using it as a broad attack against like white people. Like that doesn't help anyone. That doesn't fix anyone's situation. It's actively counterproductive because what you're doing is racially essentializing a really complicated economic issue. It makes it harder to understand and fix. Country of any that represents that today is Israel. Now, I've just been speaking about this for 10 minutes or so, so just to hammer home this point a little bit more, after all of that, after all of the nuance that I described involved in this nuance. discussion, this is what Ian is interested in. Do you think it's possible for a white person to live ethically in South Africa? Do you think the black people, who are by far the majority, have a right to remove the white population? What if a person who's black in a black ethno state falls in love with a white person? Can they raise mixed children in a black ethno state? What if people thought within a country that the only- I like how he's just dismissing these questions as though the answers of these questions don't determine whether or not millions of people get exported from the country or whether or not mixed race people are allowed to exist in that country or not. Like- isn't that, isn't it, isn't it kind of telling he's like writing these off like these are meaningless questions? Like, oh, do you think millions of people should be deported? Oh, do you think like mixed race people have a right to exist? Like, I don't, I don't know, man. I feel like those are kind of important questions a little bit. I feel like they're a little important. Just a little, it's a smidge, smidge way for them to escape colonialism was through the wholesale slaughter of the white people who lived there. If the third world decided they could do that, but it probably wouldn't work. The only way to truly succeed would be global conquest through military or nuclear arms. Do you think that would be defensible as a sort of final way of eliminating the colonization? You'll notice during this video that I haven't focused much on it. And that's because it's clearly opportunistic. I figured that this debate would be addressing some of Ian's more milk toast attitudes that Flower brought up in her videos. I actually think that I'm more of a radical than Bad Mouse or Professor Flowers because they're trying to reinforce and replicate the same regime just for a different group of people. And I'm trying to actually break it down and like provide a better solution. I actually think, I think that like, if anything, they're like the, they're like the perfect example of what Fred Hampton denounced. The idea of fighting white capitalism with black capitalism. The idea that you can fix these problems just by making the same power structures, but for different groups, which has never worked in all of history. Um, I think, yeah, I don't know. I feel like they're liberals. Libby. Libby, 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 liberals. Libby. But instead, Ian is deliberately extrapolating to stupid hypotheticals that have little to no historical basis as a way to disprove the very obvious difference laden in oppressed nationalisms. Of but in the debate, I acknowledge the difference, and also these ha don't have no historical precedence. What about the Rwandan genocide? There are plenty of examples where efforts at decolonization have led to mass death. What about, say, for example, the, uh, the, the fucking, um, what happened in, uh, fuck, Cambodia, the, um, Pol Pot. That was literally done in the name of decolonization. Like, wait, you, th these, these don't have, like, no precedent. They're, like, valid. And even, by the way, if they had no precedent, doesn't that mean Professor Flowers should be able to effortlessly answer these questions? Here's an article for chat where you can see how, um, black indigenous people are still being oppressed by the, um, black majority. Oh, shit! Talk about land back, baby. Let's go. Hey, we are moving South Africans out, okay? But we're not moving just the white ones out. We're moving them all out, motherfucker. Because it turns out black South Africans are still colonizing and oppressing the indigenous population that existed there before. What's up? Ooh, land back, baby. By the time we're done, like 8 billion humans are going to live on the moon and all of Earth will be controlled by about seven or 8,000 indigenous people who are just sort of like bewilderedly spreading out across the remaining territory that they've been given. That's, I, that's, let's go, baby. Hey, can you believe what a, what a pro-colonization advocate Professor Flowers and Bad Mouse are? That's crazy. Obviously, Ian knew that he was going to be pushed on his bad opinions, so it would make sense to instead counter with what is a very mute point. I answered every question she threw my way. She just didn't really seem to have much of an understanding of her positions. It really is crazy to me how much of the left has united behind the idea that being anti-white is more important than being correct, ethical, and socialist, you know? They're, they're literally, they're abandoning, like, everything in favor of being anti-white. Like, okay, being factually correct? Gone. Advocating for progressive positions, gone. Decolonization, gone. Like, socialism, gone. Like, all, like, throw all that on the fire, okay? We need to be performatively anti-white so that we won't be called racist by our fellow tanky lefties.
It's not like his fans wouldn't just move on from his response to something in a heartbeat, despite stating- I don't know what that post has to do with anything. ...numerous times that she's not pro-genocide, Lua doesn't get that same treatment. But she did- He does this a lot, if you'll notice, most memorably justifying pedophilia as consistent with oh! buying computer products because hey, he didn't bring want it out, to baby. lose it to the vegans. Because we, we buy shit all the time. That's Bring it up. Made the silicon farmed by slaves in Africa. Plastic made in like, you know, factory farms that pollute the earth. Like that sort of thing. But we don't. Hey guys, quick question. Do you think this is actually relevant to the to the video that he's making? Or do you think he's trying to get a dunk in on everything he thinks he can hit me with? Do you, th it, you think it's relevant to his point? Do you think he's just like, eh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, let's, 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 let's throw that in there, you know? Hit me I'm up. I'm hewing each other for it. Um, okay, so if you were to, so, you know, there's pedophiles, right, who buy child pornography. Would you bad. say they should not be held responsible for doing that? Yes. Really? Even yeah. though Under this, yeah, that's, that was the argument that I made. If you were being ethically consistent with the horrible fucking system we have, then yeah, that would be the position that you would arrive at. And the argument then, the goal, would be to get vegan gains to argue what against that and then i would say well don't you think that means we should also have strict criminal penalties for people who buy like blood diamonds or like products that are made from like child slave labor all around the world and then he would go no i think that's way too far and then i would like push him harder on that I'd be like dude don't you realize these are basically the same thing you're literally buying commodities that are funded by th the abuse of children and then eventually he would concede now, I recognize, of course, in hindsight, that optically, this isn't the best argument to make. But, you know, I gotta say, all the people it's been brought up to, even when you phrase it in a non-devil's uh, advocate way, everyone seems to agree with me. Do you remember when I talked to Suspect Sushi, the proud boy? Even he agreed with me on that. Like, I've, like, I've talked to, like, extremely, like, and when you actually lay it out to them, every time they're like, oh, okay, I get that. Probably shouldn't have said that though. And I'll be like, yeah. Yeah, it was pretty dumb. And they'll be like, okay. And then we move on to the next. Yeah. What if people don't know where the blood diamonds came from? No, I it's I'm not making an argument for like every specific like criminal penalty. I'm just saying, like, broadly, ethically, like we should we should be more aware of the harm that is done by 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 the economic systems that we we participate in, you know? Oh, so they're directly supporting child rape. Yeah, I think that's it's uh, it's hypocritical. Oh, wait, it's hypocritical. Almost like my argument isn't that the CP is good, but rather that they're both bad. See, okay, I don't know. No, if, if, people, if people are gonna look at this and hear what they hear, then nobody's gonna change their fucking mind. Yeah, you could have clip chipped me way harder than this. I'm pretty sure there are worse, like, there, like you, could have, you could have phrased that a little better. Did you know that when African-Americans arrived in Liberia, they just enslaved the natives? Yep. 100%. Ah, oh, but dude, they're like from a shared culture or whatever, dude. Dude, it's like, it's like fine, bro. When all the black people are together, they'll get along. Cause like, there's, cause, because, because I, bad mouse, am a racist. <laughs> you can do this extrapolation in any kind of way. My culture is very important to me as an oppressed minority. Oh, so what if your culture supports child brides, huh? Then that's suddenly okay? Hmm? Hmm? Ever thought of that? Obviously, we wouldn't support that. Like I've said, there are plenty of reactions. Oh! Well, then we shouldn't support ethnic cleansing. Okay. Yeah. Wait, what's the- yeah. If somebody's like, hey, you should respect my culture, and then I'm like, oh, but what about, like, the child brides? And they're like, no, I don't think you should respect that. Then that's the end of the conversation right there. Actionary practices in any culture. But c c can we just, like, try and engage in discussion for a second? We Does do? that suddenly mean that the whole concept of culture being very integral to oppressed groups, in light of the appropriation and demonization by the majority, is now somehow dismissed? And wait, are, wait, are you wait, are you, wait, are we defending the child brides? Wait, wait, I thought we moved. Wait, you can't be like, yeah, of course we don't have to care about the child brides, and then you're like, well, huh, actually, by not caring about the child brides, <laughs> proved wrong. Because Irish laddie just threw in True. something straight out of left field. It really takes me back five or six years to when anti-feminists thought that wait, they- Wait, 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 hold on, wait. <laughs> okay, I've got a hot take here. It's okay to demonize bad elements of other cultures. Listen to me, I am proudly 
a Western chauvinist against Saudi Arabians throwing gay people off rooftops. And you can clip me on that, baby. That's true. That's fucking true. You ta ta get, give me a bad element of, of, of other cultures, okay? I don't care if they come from white people or black people. Give me, give me any of that shit. Muslim people being kind of weird about gay people. I condemn it. And you can come up to me. You can come crying. You can say, you're invalidating our Islamic culture. And I'll say, I don't give a fuck. I'm not a moral relativist. I'm not. I think it's bad. I think it's bad when we do it. I think it's bad when you do it. I think it's bad when anyone does it. I maintain that. And normally, and you all know this, when I'm talking about indigenous issues or like issues with foreign cultures, I never fucking randomly bring up, uh, oh, well, what about this bad thing from your culture? Because, bro, I'm an American. I have no right to talk about bad things from other cultures, okay? Dog, I'm a fucking American. You think I'm gonna apropos of nothing out of nowhere impromptu be like well your culture does bad things like i'm a fucking american but in professor flowers case where she is over and over and over again refusing to denounce ethnic cleansing yeah it might come up a little bit that wasn't even what i expected to talk to her about she just wouldn't move away from the ethnic cleansing. but when when I was talking to Professor Flowers, I was expecting to say like, hey, it kind of came off like you were like, okay, with ethnic cleansing there a little bit. And I was expecting her to say, oh, no, 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 I don't think that. I think that it's like a little dicey, like revolutions and decolon decolonization can always play out kind of in like bloody ways. But I mean, I would want to avoid ethnic cleansing, right? And then I would move away from it. That is legitimately how I expected it to go. That is what I expected to happen. I did not expect her for two hours to... To do this, well, I think it's bad, but they have a right to thing. I did not expect that. I didn't. I didn't. I was, I was bewildered, you know? I was taken aback. Professor Flowers colonized my brain cells. They could debunk decades of research on social conflict theory in just a single video. What, what have I been debunked? Has, has, hey, by the way, has Bad Mouse uh, provided any empirical evidence to discredit a claim that I made? No? Okay, just making sure. And it really reeks of this no black rights, no gay rights, no women's rights, just human rights. What? It's liberal bile. And it is completely devoid of any nuance whatsoever. Fuck, Boy, fuck black, black I don't give a fuck about preserving culture. Yeah, well, maybe you should. Wait, hold on. Maybe you should play out the whole clip rather than the 1.5 second clip right there. The point that I was making is that, the, is that cultures change whether you want them to or not. I don't care about defending culture on its own. You can defend culture against attacks, not against uh uh uh, uh not against the 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 you know variant like flow of time. You know, there's a big difference between those things. I know that statement might make you sound very ethereal, pretty funky and out there, right? What? Well, to me, you sound like an edgy YouTube atheist. <sighs> Have we entered a leftist dark age recently? Why have so many people suddenly adopted such a reductive idea of very complex issues? Nothing makes me happier than knowing that people like this despair, knowing that I'm popular. It makes me so fucking happy. Every time I look at my monthly analytics and see that I'm getting 10 million views a month with 1 million unique viewers, and then I look at all the tanky channels and shit libs fucking screaming about me, and I think, damn, that probably fucking keeps them up at night, doesn't it? They actually wake up angry about me. I wake up and look at them and think, Oh, they're annoying. They wake up and look at me and think, is that the future of the left? And the answer, of course, is yes. You're dead, and we will bury you. This is what happens when you put winning and semantics over trying to engage in a discussion. I actually put them all on the same level. I engage in the winning. I semantically engage in the winning. Does that remind you of anything? <laughs> I would like to briefly what? touch on this comic because it's a great example. Wait, that is such a reach. V Vouch cares about winning. So he's like the guy in that Matt Boris comic. What? What? Uh, okay. <laughs> sure. Sure. All right. <laughs> okay. He, he might as well have been like, Vosh is bad here. Speaking of bad, and then it's a photo of Mussolini being hung upside down. ...example of how quickly something can go from being a very useful critique into an unnecessary dogma. On its own, the comic is good. It's explaining how obtuse it is to not think about the greater dynamics in society, and instead just use... 
If he talks about Hassan's house, if he talks about Hassan's house, I'm gonna fucking lose it. If he brings up the $2.7 million house, I will die. Use the superficial points at hand to declare victory. <laughs> but over time, this comics use has gone from getting people to think oh, into no. this is what you should think and this is how you should respond. Oh no. So streamers earning large amounts of money and fame might be counterproductive to the overall struggle, the comic. Oh, yes! Yes! He fucking did it! God. Hold on. I want you to justify this to me logically. Hold on. Please. Everyone take a second. Sit down. I just want to know. Socialist to alleged socialist. How exactly do the streamers earning large amounts of money and fame hurt the socialist struggle. How do you connect those things? How, what relationship? What? Like, oh no, socialism might have succeeded in America, but there were live streamers who made large incomes. What? Just say you don't like Hassan, dude. Dude, if people could just say, I don't like Vosh and Hassan because they make money and they annoy me. That would be so fucking based. That would be so fucking based, dude. Just say it. Just say, just make the video and be like, Vosh is fat, Hassan's head is too small, plus he's insecure, plus ratio, plus code, plus L. And just drop it. Drop that video. Shad, move. 10,000 IQ. Why pretend that your opposition to me, and I'm assuming, I have to assume that Hassan's like being rubbed in here, is part of like a revolutionary struggle. Like, oh, why don't I like streamers making money? Oh, dude, it's for the socialist cause. Yeah, that's the, that's that's the reason why. It's it's because of the socialist cause. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I've seen this sentiment oh, on far on. too many occasions, and I always find it really depressing. Do you see how Good. all the nuance is now gone? All talk of thinking about how I is this nuance. This speech, is that speech bubble the nuance that's being destroyed by the Matt Boris comic? Where's the, what, what nuance? What? Financials and fame might affect our decision making. No, it's not worth talking about because Matt Boris comic. Don't bother engaging, Matt Boris comic. Wait, but we do engage, we engage all the time because you won't shut the fuck up about it, but you haven't made an argument yet. Don't bother analyzing, Matt Boris comic. And as a final remark to all these genocide supporters, like notice that he didn't actually say how it was counterproductive. That how in, in a capitalist society, fame and wealth are connected, right? So if socialists are famous, that usually connects in some way to their wealth, right? Like generally, if you're famous because you're a professor, there can be a bit of ambiguity on that. But if you're in media, then yeah. So socialists being famous means socialists become well but how do you spread socialism unless there are famous social how do accusations since i'm sure ian's fans love yeah, sorry no we have to stay irrelevant and weak leftism is a subculture and i get lots of e-girl pussy from making the subculture small i don't want to actually win there are responsibilities and expectations associated with winning i just want to be a part of a permanent ideological minority with no power or relevance that's why i became a tanky zero chance of winning 100 percent chance of e-girl pussy no my social club arena is being destroyed my larp arena my level three fireball arena no you're actually trying to spread the word no to talk about logic well here's some for you not saying yes or no doesn't mean that you therefore support the opposite <laughs> simply that the answer is not yes or no uh, libertarians love to posit the self-ownership principle that if you don't own your body that therefore means that somebody else does what but what in reality the answer is much more simple nobody does what are we talking about? People are missing the point when it comes to the statement that the colonized do not have to live with their colonizers. It's not to say which is right and which is wrong, simply that colonialism digs its own grave. I like how they're asking how can we be sure all these men are colonizers when they're literally looking at troops firing guns. When in the debate, I was talking about citizens of South Africa who have lived there for hundreds of years. But I this is a very, very, very honest representation of my position. I how can we be sure these men were colonizers? Well, 
they're in uni- they're in a military uniform. That's I, I'm getting a feeling a little bit, you know. Grave diggers and said grave diggers are not to blame for that. Colonialism is a fucked up issue, drawn out with horrendous baggage and trauma that doesn't always leave the most desirable of options in the minds of the colonized. Uh, this is like TOS yet, for Twitch. Despite well. all of this, I highly doubt yeah. that if Ireland were to become peak Ireland, that you would suddenly have Catholics and Southerners going down to hunt all the Brits and prods from Ulster, would you? Somehow. Okay, first of all, you're clearly from the UK. If you sincerely do not believe there was any potential. Have you read on the troubles? Wait, ho wait, hold on. If if you sincerely do not believe that th some kind of violent secession would not bring with it the possibility of ethnic cleansing, even in like a like between white people, okay, read up on your own country. I guess read read up on the UK. I'm American, dog. Anyway, that's one. Second of all, uh, it would be bad if there was a violent secession. Uh, from the UK for for Northern Ireland, which then led to the 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 killing or the deportation of millions of British people or of of of, of, of English people. Sorry, that would be bad. I I do think that would be bad. I will I will defend that. And if I was talking to an like a, a like an Irish like unification advocate who was talking about like yeah you know we <laughs> I I almost did a very bad accent and I'm not I'm not going back there. Um, if they uh if if they were like yeah you know well we need to do anything to live away from our colonizers and i was like oh well i hope english people can still live there and he's like yeah well we'll see and i'm like wait you're not going to like deport all the english people from the potential unified ireland and they were like well got to keep our options open i would take some issue with that yeah how i doubt that's going to happen i wonder why and rather than me having to do all your homework for you, you might want to find out the answer for that question yourself. Well, I, can't, I, can't, I cannot believe that he just said that after downplaying the potential for some kind of like, like street purge of fucking Protestants. Uh, what? Guys, hold on. Do we have any UK fellows in here? Can you agree with me that this is an incredibly stupid take? Do you, do you, do you not agree that if done like in a sufficiently like like violent way, the potential absolutely exists for some kind of Protestant purge or English purge in unified Ireland, if it was done in like a bad or harmful way, like in the, like in the worst case scenario, right? Right? I'm sorry, I've read a little bit on this, and it seems like that is absolutely something that could have happened. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. People like Ian will always try and claim that they are only being objective. Well, True. to the native, objectivity. Is always against him. But I'm pro -native. And I take I'm those words with you, if I were you, anti even if for the sake of cleansing. arguments, Professor Flower's point here was a little bit flawed. Why exactly would you therefore take the views of Ian like some. Why do you think your haters never give a charitable interpretation of your arguments? It's because I'm big and I'm powerful in terms of my like cultural reach, and my arguments are completely unassailable. Honest to God, I really think that's it. The fact that all these attacks on me rely on like object, either objectively incorrect information or a complete misrepresentation misrepresentation of my positions gives me a feeling that yeah, it might just be that they have no choice but to shadow box with straw men. That like it it does make me feel pretty good. Or to put it another way, guys, how do you think this would go if Bad Mouse was on for a debate? How do you think that would go? <laughs> yeah, something something tells me uh, something tells me that'd be good content. Hey, Bad Mouse. Just saying, man. Sort of sacred testament, as most of his fans evidently appear to do. True. Keep when doing someone it. makes remarks like this. I mean, you can argue logistics on this. No part of America is going to be given over to black people. You moved to Africa, where no country is better in total than America is in terms of socioeconomic achievement? Probably not. I don't know. Are black people in Africa safe? It seems like they're not, because they die more than black people do over here. But your economy is going to be buckled under the knee of America. I was just wondering how you felt about black people who are racist against white people. This is also what modern Nazis say about Jews in America. It's literally trying to have your own self-determination. That's what it That's is. That's what the white nationalists what ask for, right there. So Self-determination is the dog whistle that they use when talking about ethnostates. Wait, literally everything that I said was completely correct. Does none of that language give off awfully familiar vibes? Does none of that mindset not raise an eyebrow? Does it not scream of a certain first world centric thinking? Nope, not even slightly. You know why? Because I've seen where this logic goes. It leads to fucking, it leads to the Rwandan genocide. It leads to, um, it leads to what happened in Cambodia. I've seen where this logic goes. It don't work. It's bad. 
is bad. It's not good. It's bad. Shouldn't do it. It's not good. And does it not, for that matter, seem incredibly simplistic and juvenile? Nah. The lack. Wait, Vosh, didn't you debate this guy like quite some time ago? No, that was Hakeem. And Hakeem is a pussy. Hakeem is one of those like, oh yeah, Vosh is a liberal, Vosh bad, Vosh bad. But when he talked with me, he agreed with every single fucking thing that I said. And I didn't back off a single position. Like everything that I said was 100% in alignment with what I say on my streams. But afterwards, he got flack because he toned like, like lightened the tone a little bit with me. It's a shame because I thought that maybe he was more reasonable in person, but we went right back to like the crazy shit talking right after. Then he said he'd debate me again. It's been like six months since then. More than six months, you know? Um, yeah. No, I don't think I've debated uh, Bad Mouse. I don't think so. Lack of any response from people who take in these words tells me quite a lot about the nature of the people that we're dealing with. This is the problem with the baby leftist mindset. I love indigenous it is people. a highly smug and self satisfied understanding of the world that is hostile to. Imagine calling somebody else smug when you're British. Imagine. Imagine. Oh my god. Oh, this is a tweet from uh, 2019. It's not enough to not be a tanky, mock them, socially ostracize them, kick them out of your communities. Damn, I was based in 2019 too. And then Badnaps responds, it's no biggie, you already do enough ostracizing work just being yourself. This was back when his channel was larger than mine. So now we're like, well, now we're Vosh sized. So, you know, I guess, uh, you know, however hard we ostracize, uh, it clearly wasn't enough to stop this from happening. They tw did, they, did they tweet it all? Oh, I could DM. <sighs> gotta, gotta work to make your content. You gotta, you gotta craft it yourself, you know, like a, like a content blacksmith. Okay, we're going with the, we're going with the honey approach. It's not gonna work. Dude's a pussy. All tankies are pussy. Why are you leaking DMs with the fuck? I'm so sorry, guys. I'm leaking this DM. I'm so sorry. This tweet of theirs aged even worse. <laughs> oh no. 100% worth the trouble if it means kicking brainlet authoritarian conspiracy theorists wearing red out of my community. Unfortunately, the only grave you're digging is your own, bud. Your social attitudes don't build anything, let alone a community. <sighs> to any critical analysis of its own chauvinist characteristics, because to do so... Yeah, what's the opposite of a prophecy? And if that happens, then that is a very grave moment for Vosh. Vouch. The most wretched of this whole thing, though, is Boosh. the fact that even if Ian decided, by some divine encounter, to go back on all of his words and change his mind... And what were... Again, he still hasn't actually ascribed to me any positions. He's only clipped out, like, two or three second snippets of the debate where I ask valid questions and then snarkily acts as though they're invalid questions. But he hasn't actually... Has he even he hasn't even said that I'm anti land back, you know? Reassess his positions. Very vague. He still wins. Very liberal. Ian's audience would adapt and soon follow his party line. True. How ironic. Feeling validated because their lord and master has now given them the green light. Da, da, and yet da, all of those da, who da, made him change his mind da, in the first da, place da, would be cast da, da, into general da, da, obscurity. Da, da, whilst da, Ian grew da, da, ever more da, da. popular. Hell, even his fans might use this change as a way to- Is this like- Is this like Doomer fuel? Is this like Doomer fuel for- Is he- He's- He's talking about me the way liberals talked about Trump in 2016. It's- It's, it's like a break- Like a takedown of Trump. He's like, well, but he won anyway. He won anyway, and this country's headed for a dark period. Like- Hey! <laughs> Say, see, haters, he did change his mind. See, are you going to be happy now? <gasps> Corporation is certainly not something inherent Ooh. to corporations, that's for sure. Truly, there is. Why would you include a picture of me with Pigeon when you're trying to make me look bad? This is, this does not help. Look at her. She's so ugly, <laughs> so wrinkly, so ugly and wrinkly. Look at her. Ooh. No better endorsement of Vosh than a protest against Vosh. If you are a fan of Ian and you feel like some of what I've said here is a little bit too harsh or in bad you didn't faith, say anything. you're sort of proving my point. I'm not really oh. that interested. <laughs> well, that's a good that's a good way of establishing good faith. Uh, if you think I was wrong, you can uh, eat shit. I don't really care. <laughs> don't criticize me. I don't care.
I've heard that excuse far too many times now for me to bother taking it seriously. It Not going. every belief is gained through gentle pushing, I'm afraid to say. A lot of my beliefs that I hold today had to, to some extent, be thrust upon me. It may Wait, be- It's not about thrusting v views upon you or anyone else. It's just about, like, lying or being misrepresentative. Very uncomfortable at first. I, I didn't like it. I wanted to fight back. I felt like jumping out. But eventually, I came around to them. I had a great big moan about it, and I moved on. And I'm better for having known them. If by any chance you felt this video made you question a view- Just out of curiosity, how do you lack enough self-awareness to believe that the process of your growth and learning have stopped here? What he's essentially saying is that I just hold whatever intuitive beliefs are convenient to me, and he's fought- he's- he's had to be challenged and he's fought to adopt new views, and the ones he have, has now are totally correct. But that's a pretty anti-intellectual way of thinking about this stuff, right? I mean, if he wants to, he can continue being wrong, or he can debate me and very forcibly be introduced to the correct opinions on this matter. What I'm really asking for Bad Mouse is to be consistent and perpetuate the process that he says led to his intellectual growth. He says that he had to get dunked on a little bit to grow. And what I'm essentially saying is he should come on my stream sometime so I can, uh, so, so I can uh, uh, fucking demolish him a little bit. Uh, so, so I can ruin his day and make him spend the next month checking his Twitter notifications Be for his for his growth. So he so we can grow as a person. You things, I highly advise you actually take some interest in some of this stuff. It's bad enough that as a white guy, more people are going to listen to me and take me seriously than if I wasn't. I do not want to be emulating that same dynamic of which I am criticizing. I only know what I do because I've bothered reading up on it and listening to the conversations of people who are a lot more knowledgeable than me. Have you cited anything in the comment? You said you read up on it. Nope. Just links to YouTube videos. Okay. I mean, I've read like decolonization theory and talked with experts both privately on and off stream uh, and also emailed them back and forth and also contacted like professors and representatives from activist groups. In my university, when I went to Humboldt State University, there was a local tribe that did have some invested political uh, uh, sort of needs in the community. And yeah, no, but but I'm sure uh, I'm sure Bad Mouse uh, knows a lot about all of this. You know, I'm sure he's uh, very educated. I just want to say, man, and I've said this before: if I was an indigenous land back advocate, can you imagine like how frustrating it'd be to go online? and find that the people defending me are like smarmy UK white boys who are saying that it's actually like anti-indigenous to say you shouldn't do ethnic cleansing. You know what I mean? Yeah, this guy cited Malcolm X and then defended the nation of Islam. I have no idea. It's unfathomable to me how a person could do go from A to B within three minutes. But he did it effortlessly. He just, he, he, he just, seamlessly transition from one point to another without any yeah unreal shit actually fucked up yeah no it's it's crazy but he doesn't give a fuck about Malcolm X nor does he give a fuck again about racial minorities he only cares about uh virtue signaling by performatively expressing dislike for the west and for white people that's it that's that's it that's it it's uh, all everything else is in service of that you know and piecing it all together making actual analysis of each individual situation, instead of just following along some vile dogma. Well, Why? so should you. The well, conversations and discussions that we are currently having are like a lot more vile. complex than some BuzzFeed article. And in case you were wondering, I have no intentions of debating here. On oh, well, there you go. Wait, hold on. Honestly, in his reluctant defense, Malcolm Epps was involved with the Nation of Islam very early on before leaving. Well, yeah, I, I, I know that. And then they killed him. Malcolm X was involved. Listen, Malcolm X was involved with Nation of Islam during what we historians call the Joker period of Malcolm X's career. You know, he had good positions, and then during his Nation of Islam phase, he had some mixed positions, and then after that, he had really good positions. So that that was sort of his Joker moment a little bit. You know, he he grew, he learned, and he grew, uh, and I think that's a great thing. Do you think that Bad Mouse drew this of me himself? I think that's really sweet. He got the keloid too. That's, I think it's cute. Again, what a lot of you need to understand is that this modern obsession with debate doesn't really mean that much. It doesn't prove anything, and it favors the more ruthless and showmany person. 
that which I am not. And you go around carrying that Later. debate bro attitude into your later life. Believe me, Later. as a person who has had personal experience about this over my adult life, it does not pan out too well. By the way, that video that they were just, they threw up there, I don't know why we're citing just like random YouTube videos, but <clears throat> the why debating sucks. Here's something that I've always been willing to admit. Debating is not a good way at arriving at the truth. It is not a good format for, uh, for, for determining which, like, which positions are truthful. What it is good at is effectively delivering political positions. Debate isn't good for arriving at truth, but if you already have something that's defensible, you can then present that, and if people have vastly inferior arguments. This is why I win just all the time, you know? Uh, it's because uh, I've already found the truth. The truth of progressive socialism, which I think Badmouse could stand to learn from a little bit. I don't know what flavor of liberalism he's engaged in here, but yeah, it's just, uh, I don't know. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's not very dialectical. You should read Marx. He favors the more ruthless and showmany person, sure. that which I am not. Also, to, to be fair, Video essays are also not the best way of arriving at the truth. In fact, I'd say they're about potentially as dishonest as debate are. Because in uh, video essays, as this video has demonstrated, it's entirely possible through performativity, good editing, and uh, clean delivery to present ludicrously stupid positions that you could never defend in a debate. I've seen dozens of videos like that. Video essays can, because they've been very carefully crafted beforehand, deliver positions that are utterly indefensible if you just talk with a person. Like, completely. Like, in those cases, debate is actually a preferable way of arriving at the truth, assuming the person with the better positions comes even moderately prepared. Um, yeah, but uh, it's... Uh, yeah, so I feel like that's a ubiquitous criticism. And you go around carrying that debate bro attitude into your later life. Believe me. As a person who has had personal experience about this over my adult life, it does- Oh, sorry, hold on. I keep pausing, I know. Damn, I didn't know Abigail Thorne didn't like me that much. Holy shit. Uh, Bad Mouse, this is the Twitter post, and there's Abigail Thorne posting in, uh, in response. Damn, that's, uh, that's pretty wild. Alright, I hate the left now. Take the black pill. There's only one left, and it's mine. Wait, Abby doesn't like Vosh? No, Abby, Abby doesn't seem to like Vosh. Um, <clears throat> but yeah. Um, I didn't she hated you. Well, it's not really a matter of hate, it's just, if you're a leftist, you should have nothing to do with Bad Mouse, right? Guys, have you seen a leftist position asserted in this video? I don't think she cares about you, I think she just knows Bad Mouse from three years ago when he last posted. Well, first of all, she definitely knows who I am. Everybody knows who I am. God, it's so serious. Um, but also, uh, uh, Bad Mouse is a reactionary, and a filthy liberal. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, this, this implicitly suggests an endorsement. It's fair to infer. Does not pan out too well. In three or four years, you'll all be looking back at how cringe you were. Ian has clearly showcased in his time here that he's interested in one thing and one thing only. Money. His ego. Mo the only time is- It's donations. Chat? Bring it in. Bring it in. Tier one subs. Look at all these white names. What are you guys doing? What do you got? I just saw like a wave of like 20 white names in a row. What are you guys doing? It's money. It's going to reveal that. If the American pretensions were based on more solid, a more honest assessment of life and of themselves, it would not mean for Negroes, when someone says urban renewal, <coughs> that Negroes are going to be thrown out into the streets, which is what it does mean now. This is not an act of God. We're dealing with society made and ruled by men. If the American Negro had not been present in America, I am convinced that the history of the American labor movement would be much more edifying than it is. It is a terrible thing for an entire people to surrender to the notion that one ninth of its population is beneath them. And until that moment, until the moment comes <coughs> when we, the Americans, we, the American people, are able to accept the fact that I have to accept, for example, that my ancestors are both white and black, that on that continent we are trying to forge a new identity for which we need each other. And that I am not a war. I'm sorry, did he just argue that white and black people should need each other? That they want to forge a world of mutual codependence? 
Didn't this literally open by him saying that my position that white and black people should work together and get along was a juvenile baby but I can't deal with these videos, man. Do they even review this shit? Do they do they have editors to check them on this shit? This is the this isn't just this isn't just pro my position. This is anti the first position this video expressed. Why? Is it because wait, bad mouse. Is it because he's black? Did you just hear words coming from a black guy and you thought this will agree with me? Be honest, because this is literally antithetical to the first shit you said in the video. I just gotta wonder, man. Did you do, you saw a black and white video of a black guy and you were like, right on, brother. Right on, brother. And and you you put that in there at the end. You're like, this'll get him? What, what, what was the thought process here? What? Why, why are you like this? Why are you people like this? Right, right on, brother. In it? Right, right on, cheerio, brother. Okay, I'll put it another way. Do you guys have a better explanation than it's because he's black? Do you have a, do you have a better explanation than he saw a video of a black guy and just threw it in there? Because I, 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 I can't think of anything more explanatory than that. It's because he's stupid? Well, okay, but that's holistic. That, 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 that works. There's 30 seconds left. Maybe he refutes it. Oh, shit. You're right. There's 30 seconds left. We might be, like, totally putting the carp over the horse. Hold on. Let's, let's, let's find out. Maybe he'll be like, actually, that's cringe. Black people should all live in Africa? Is that, is that what this is going to end with? Let's, let's listen, okay? God of America. I'm not an object of missionary charity. I am one of the people who built the country. Until this moment, there is scarcely any hope for the American dream. Because the people who are denied participation in it, by their very presence, will wreck it. And if that happens, it's a very grave moment for the West. Thank you. He, he's, he's arguing for everyone being able to participate in the American dream. Uh, 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 what? 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 I, guys! This is what, this is the criticism that I get. This is the, this is the, this is the quality of criticism that I receive. This is the, this is the magic that I get, man. God damn, dude. James Baldwin hated the, um, the Nation of Islam. Um, short stories. Talked about a lot of based ass progressive shit. Yeah, boy. Baldwin's protagonists are often, but not exclusively, African American and gay and bisexual men. Often feature as protagonists. Oh, that's why he hated Nation of Islam. Oh, because Nation of Islam, the hate group that um, Bad Mouse was promoting, was in favor of. Wait, I'm sorry. Do they want the removal of gay people, or do they want to execute the gay people? Can you guys remind me? Wait, wait, where are they? Are they progressive homophobes or reactionary homophobes? Which, which, which one is it? You know. They don't think they actually exist? Ha! Well, I guess that's something. Anyway, having a feeling this guy probably not a huge, uh, let's see, let's see. Social and political activism. You know what? No, I, uh, moved away from the, let's see, literary career. Come on, come on. Social and political activism. Thank you. Okay. Well, we're friend, uh, civil rights legislation is being debated in Congress. He met MLK Jr. Cool, cool. Very based, very based. When he wrote about the movement, he aligned himself with the ideals of the Congress of Racial Equality and the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Really? This, this, this is the guy you're busting out to argue against my position that you shouldn't engage in ethnic cleansing? A member of the Congress of Racial Equality and the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee? Seriously? That's... That's that's what we've got here. The, these guys are like these guys are like yes, yeah, soup. These are not racial separationists. These guys are very like absolutely one hundred percent in favor of like in America we should all work together for civil rights. Yeah, like MLK tier shit. Yeah, like like very 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 directly. Yeah, he did a lecture for that. He had uh he uh. Lectured to students, white liberals, oh, like uh, Bad Mouse, and anyone else listening about his racial ideology, an ideological position between the muscular approach of Malcolm X and the nonviolent approach of Mar Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He was pro-socialism, ah, unlike uh, 
uh, uh, Nation of Islam. Very nice, very nice. He was, he was widely celebrated. I, I know about this guy. I don't know every detail about where exactly he aligned, like with regards to the details of the civil rights stuff. Um, let's see. Based, 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 Baldwin's sexuality clashed with his activism. The civil rights movement was hostile to homosexuals. Hey, do you think this guy would have a problem being spoken of favorably by a person who defended the Nation of Islam, one of the most violently homophobic, like, pro-black organizations in the history of the United States? Does anyone else feel like that's a little fucked up, that this guy was, like, largely excluded from that activism by, by, the, by, the, by the groups that, like, he's endorsing here? Nonetheless, he rejected the label civil rights activist or that he had participated in a civil rights movement, instead agreeing with Malcolm X's assertion that if one is a citizen, one should not have to fight for one's civil rights. In a 1964 interview, Baldwin rejected the idea that the civil rights movement was an outright revolution, instead calling it, quote, a very peculiar revolution because it has to have its aim, have its aims, the establishment of a union and a radical shift in the American mores, the American way of life, not only as it applies to the black people, obviously, but as it applies to every citizen in this country. Damn. It seems like he is explicitly, directly, and unambiguously in favor of fighting for racial integration in the United States. Wow. That's crazy. Well, we've done it, folks. We've proven for the 875th time on this stream that everyone who disagrees with me is wrong. I, uh... I I'm... I'm sorry. I'm feeling so conceited right now, but it's really difficult to... Okay, I'll ask you guys. Would you not feel a little bit arrogant if this was the kind of stuff people try to hit you with? Like, like, wouldn't this make you feel like, damn, I must have some based fucking positions if people have to do shit like this to even attempt to optically pretend to debunk me. Bosch, if I recall correctly, he, wasn't he saying that while they were bad, they weren't as bad as white nationalists? No. I don't think, did Bad Mouse even say that they were, like, really bad? It seemed like he was like, eh, you know, Vosh would say they're reactionary, but they've done more for black civil rights than most other orgs or whatever. I don't, I don't think he, I, like, I don't know. It didn't seem like he was denouncing them. It seemed like he was, he, and when he talked about the bad elements of them, he only framed them from my perspective. But the video was trying to debunk my perspective, so it seems kind of weird. Also, by the way, I've said this before, and it's true. There's nothing racially essentialist about terror. If, the, if Louis Farrakhan and Nation of Islam were as powerful in this country as white nationalists, they would be as dangerous. If they had control of a country, they would be as dangerous as the Nazis were. Yeah, their ideology is basically the same. It's just for a different group. That's it. I feel like a ton of people are like, well, yeah, dude, they're not as dangerous. Well, sure, they're not. Because black supremacy hasn't taken root in America the way white supremacy has. Sure, that's true. But if it did, they would be as bad. So ideologically, they are as bad. They're just dispossessed. I don't, I don't know why you'd be like, well, it's, it's essentially, it's, I, I don't know what to say, man. It's essentially like, um, it's essentially like talking to two neo-Nazis, you know, who have the exact same ideology. But one of them is like, yeah, you know, I'm just kind of like an incel who browses 8chan. I don't really, like, do much. And the other one is like, uh, yeah, well, you know, I, I, like, uh, I go to, like, the local range, and there's, like, a group of people I might form a militia with. And you step back and take a look at both of them and, like, sort of go, hmm. And then a second person walks up, and they're like, damn, those people are both Nazis. And you're like, whoa, hold on. That person is nowhere near as dangerous as the other one while pointing at the person who's just on 8chan. And you're like, Okay, yeah, they're not as dangerous, but like ideologically, they're just as bad. Like you could swap them, and the same outcomes would be. And they're like, whoa! Like it's, it's yeah, it's just. It's a, I've made all these arguments before. I hope you're not tired of hearing them. 